a near miss in a basement, a garage fire, a tragic camper blaze, and a massive battery recall. Lithium ion batteries are making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Let's talk about what's going on. First, let's talk about the Skill Recall. Skill recently announced a major recall of just over 60,000 lithium ion tool batteries due to reports of overheating and fire risks. The recall was prompted by 100 reported thermal incidents, including batteries overheating, melting, smoking, and catching fire. These incidents resulted in eight reports of minor burns and smoke inhalation, as well as 49 cases of property damage. If you own a Skill tool, it's crucial to check to see if your batteries are part of this recall. Skill is providing a collection kit to customers so they can safely ship those affected batteries back to the manufacturer. Here's the key detail. Once a battery is recalled, it's now classified as a DDR battery, damaged, defective, or recalled. Under Department of Transportation regulations, DDR batteries are treated as hazardous materials. This means they require special packaging, labeling, and handling for transport. Now, I'm not certain what Skills Collection Kit looks like, but whatever it is, it should be designed to meet these strict safety requirements. It's critical that these batteries don't pose a risk during transit. It's important to respect your lithium ion batteries. It's not widely publicized, but tool batteries do catch on fire far more often than you'd think. Recently, a lawnmower battery went in a thermal runaway while charging in Ann Arbor, Michigan. There was significant damage to the garage, but luckily there were no injuries and the fire didn't get into the house itself. Most people, they tend to leave their batteries on the charger indefinitely, and that's really not a great idea. In Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, a homeowner came home from work and noticed the smell of burning plastic. Their weed whacker had been stored in the basement for winter. It wasn't even on the charger, but the battery itself, it went into thermal runaway. The incident filled their house with toxic smoke, but thankfully didn't result in a fire. And they actually didn't call the fire department. And you have to think, how many people would have that exact same situation? The fire department would never be even notified, and we'd never have a record of it. Now imagine if that happened in the middle of the night when people were sleeping it could have easily turned into a tragic situation. In Lebanon County, Pennsylvania, a family of four was celebrating Christmas at a campground when their camper caught fire in the early hours of the morning. The family made it out okay, rescuing two of their dogs, but one of their nine-year-old dogs didn't make it out of the fire and tragically passed away. This fire was linked to a lithium-ion battery for an RC car that was stored on the camper's deck. The batteries were right outside the main entrance of the home and even though they weren't charging at the time of the fire, it turned into a significant fire. Unfortunately, the family lost all their belongings. So what can you do to stay safe? Here are some tips for handling lithium ion batteries in your home or workshop. First, always inspect your batteries for signs of damage, swelling or discoloration. Think of how often you drop a tool battery before charging it. Make sure it's not cracked or damaged in any way. If you noticed anything unusual, stop using the battery immediately. Store your batteries in a cool, dry place and keep them away from flammable materials and extreme temperatures. When it comes to charging, always use chargers specified by the manufacturer. For that battery type, never leave batteries charging unattended or overnight, and once they've fully charged, disconnect them. Yes, I know, the charger, the battery management system, they should work together to prevent overcharging. You shouldn't have to worry about taking your battery off that charger. But damage to either system can sometimes lead to failure, which is why it's important to stay cautious. Along those same lines, always use manufacturer-specific batteries with your tools. Sure, I get it. You can go online, find those off-brand batteries for a fraction of the cost of the actual manufacturer's batteries. But those cheap alternatives are not built to the same standards. They often lack reliable battery management systems, they use cheaper cells, and they pose a serious fire risk. Think about your cell phone for a moment. Some of us remember the days where cell phones had replaceable batteries. It was fantastic, but it also opened the door for a flood of low quality aftermarket batteries, and that led to a lot of fires. The same risk applies to your tools and devices today. If you have old devices or lithium ion batteries around, always dispose of them properly. Don't just toss them in the regular recycling or trash. I understand that figuring out the right way to dispose of lithium ion batteries can be confusing. And that's one of those issues I'm currently working on for a new series. By following these tips, you can reduce the risk of battery related fires and accidents. And remember, recalls like the recent one from Skill, they're out there for a reason. Don't ignore them.